All right, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about parallel debugging and interactivity with IPython. So IPython is actually the default kernel for the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, you can also access it from the command line. So if you go to your to uh, Cloud9 or your terminal and you just type IPython where you've installed Jupyter, um, <coughs> then you're going to get an IPython terminal. And uh, it's really Python with the help of these so-called magic functions, um, like for example, the simplest one being like ls, right? So from a standard Python terminal, right, if we go back out and we type Python and we type ls, you're going to get an error because uh, Python doesn't know the command ls. Uh, however, in, uh, in IPython, right, then you can do things like type ls. And, and uh, technically, ls is sort of a shortcut even for the magic function, which usually start with a percent sign. So percent ls is one, uh, percent edit. Uh, is another one that will drop you into your default editor. So if I uh, say edit my file.txt, um, I guess the file has to exist, right? So if we uh, touch uh, my file.txt, uh, and then we go into IPython and were to say edit my file.txt, there, then it drops you into the standard editor, which in my case is Vim, um, and then you can type some text, okay? So no big deal there. But that's just a, a, a glimpse of magic functions, and it turns out that there's a special uh, class of these magic functions that will allow us to do some interactive debugging with, with um, in parallel computing. So parallel computing is really difficult, uh, or debug, I'm sorry, not parallel computing, but debugging in parallel computing is, is very hard. Um, as we've seen, you've probably seen in your own trial and error that print statements are very you know, inefficient. Uh, it's difficult to see which uh, rank is printing um, at any given time because they all race to the screen. Uh, traditional de debuggers, like for example, GDB, the GNU debugger, uh, don't work well. And that's not to say they don't work at all. It is possible to do some parallel debugging with GDB, and I've done quite a bit of it myself, uh, but there you have to launch essentially multiple instances of Xterm, one for every rank that a processor, you know, that a task is running on, and then you sort of have to debug them in isolation. Uh, there are some parallel debuggers. One of them is TotalView. Uh, it's actually a great tool, but it's expensive and, uh, you know, not open source. And so this is where, uh, at least in the Python world, IPython can help us, and specifically the IPy parallel module. And so this is something that you uh, possibly don't have installed in, um, in, in our HPC class where we're using the Cloud9 environment. Um, it is likely not installed de by default in your environment. You can install it with conda, so conda install um, IPy parallel. So now we have it, and uh, you know, if you were to uh, open IPython and then type import IPy parallel, uh, it, it would not fail. It, it, it's installed now. Um, however, we still need to do a few more things to um, to set up. So um, the first thing we need to do is to at least the first time we run it, we need to create a profile, and our profile will be. Uh, an MPI profile. So, for example, for this first time, you can just copy this exact text into your terminal. Uh, IPython profile create parallel profile MPI. And that will, as you see, create a hidden folder called IPython in your home directory. Uh, inside that will be profile underscore MPI, which is the name of that profile, and then a whole bunch of files within that. Okay. And so what we want to do is we want to edit the file that's called IP cluster config, and specifically what we want to do is add the line uh, that's shown here, uh, IP cluster engines, engine launcher class equals MPI. And so if we go back uh, to Cloud9 and we open that file, uh, again, it's in our home directory, IPython profile MPI. Uh, it's called IP cluster config. Uh, and what you'll see is actually, uh, this is a config file, but all of the defaults are just um, commented out. So instead of having to add that line explicitly, 
Um, again, what we could do is just search for IP cluster engines, uh, and it's probably here. IP cluster engines, um, and uh, there it is. The um, right here, this is what we want to do. So the IP engines engine launcher class, we want to uh, uncomment that guy and then we want to change this to MPI. Um, uh, MPI. And it also allows you some other things. So for example, the, the, uh, the number of engines to start, the default is to use one for each CPU on your machine. Um, so you can change this on the command line later, but if you want to, say, set the default to 2, for example, uh, you can do that now, and then we can write and quit this file. Okay? So from then, uh, from there, we're ready to go ahead and, and launch uh, a parallel kernel. So from the command line, we're going we're gonna to write this command. This would launch uh, four, um, four processors. Uh, and if you're not familiar, if you recall, the ampersand at the end of the line launches this process in the background. So what we're going to do is go ahead and launch this guy. And it launches in the background, and it takes a few, uh, few seconds to get going. Uh, but eventually, this will you know, say that this appears to have launched uh, the four engines with MPI. So we'll have to actually leave this running uh, and open a new terminal and connect to that guy. So again. Going back here, now we can connect via IPython. Um, so what we'll do is go ahead and uh, launch IPython. And then again, as this says, we'll uh, run these commands right here, and I'll just copy that in. So we're going to import IPy parallel client, uh, load the profile MPI. I'll just, because uh, I can't. Uh, so C equals client uh, profile equals MPI. And then I should be able to say C IDs and then one, two, three, four. So there are the, the four IDs um, of, the, um, of the parallel cluster that's running right now, OK? Uh, so let's do something a little more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, script right here. This is an interactive, uh, this is a script uh, that essentially just takes a, um, a NumPy vector A, uh, computes its sum on every processor, and then does a reduce uh, across all processors. So again, S will be something that is um, loaded on uh, each individual processor. However, when you call the when you run this script, then the the total reduce will be um, will be the result on on all processors. Okay, so uh, what we can do then uh, is well, first of all, let's let's go ahead and copy this script and and place it in a file on our IPython. Uh, so, uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and exit out of here and uh, open up psum.py and paste that in there. So uh, again, from MPI uh, for pi, import MPI, import numpy, and then define this function psum, which again it takes an argument a that's a numpy array, calls its sum in parallel on every processor, and then does a parallel reduce, uh, all reduce, which means that the value of the sum ends up on all processors the same time. So we'll go ahead and write this guy. So what we want to do is go ahead and open up uh, IPython again and run through the same commands we did before, that is connecting uh, back to the cluster. So um, first uh, from IPython parallel, import client, um, then C equals client. Profile MPI U equals C. This gives us access to everything uh, that's in the client. Um, then we'll, what we'll want to do is 
this type view run psum dot pi. This uh, runs that file on all processors, uh, executes it, which defines that function, you know, uh, across all processors. Then we can actually do something in parallel. So we can say px for parallel execute. That's a magic function. A equals numpy uh, random and 100. So that gives us on each processor a, a vector A uh, that contains a 100 random numbers. So if we wanted to look at that, um, we could uh, do view of A. And so uh, there's the, the, the four arrays, one for each processor, uh, defined like that. So then we can actually parallel execute that function. So we'll say s equals, uh, you know, as s for sum, s equals p sum a. And then we can look at what the sum of that is. And because it's an all reduce, its value should be on each processor the same, right? Because it's summing up, uh, it's summing up the four vectors uh, tot in totality to to each processor. So the sum of, uh, of all of those um, and then reduced to each processor is that number 203.68. So here we're actually doing some parallel computing which allows us to uh, you know, view, you know, we're doing interactive parallel computing. So that allows us to sort of step through, not a debugger in the sense of, of stepping through the code uh, like you would in, in GDB or, or PDB, but to, to do just um, interactive exploration that might allow you to figure out what's going on with your code a little more. So of course, if you had a more complex code than psum, you could run it, then you could inspect the intermediate variables uh, using these views as we've done here. Um, you can also do things directly, so uh, let's see if I can get this right, but it's uh, like view, uh, scatter. So what we want to do is scatter a vector b, uh, and that vector will be a numpy numpy a range uh, from 1 to uh, say 20 um, uh, we have to uh, import it numpy as np and we can do that again and then we should be able to look at view uh, b uh, and so you, you see you know we created the vector uh, NumPy A range creates a, a single vector 0 to 20, and then we're going ahead and immediately scattering that into a value B that is um, spread out across all the processors. So uh, this gives you a way, uh, at least within the py Python ecosystem, to do some uh, parallel exploration, and that might help in your debugging code. So the last thing we just want to do is we want to make sure that we stop the cluster. So we need to issue the command uh, IP cluster stop. Uh, we can just copy this from here. Um, going back, uh, exiting out and from the bash command line again, IP cluster stop profile MPI should uh, quit that. And if you go back to where we originally launched it, uh, you'll see that uh, it, it's doing some, some stopping the engines here.